Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to this channel. If you live in the U.S., it is Valentine's Day. And if you're an American, you know what that means. It is officially the day the love that's held together. when all the gyms clear out, the sign-up sheets for cardio equipment at the gym go away, and we all develop temporary amnesia regarding the goals that we just set six weeks ago. And statistically speaking, yes, this is true, but I also do see it maybe pre-COVID, but I do see it every year at the gym. So I know that it's not only a statistic, but I actually see it in real time play out that really the gyms do clear out right around the middle of February. So in honor of this holiday that signifies most people giving up or maybe lightening up on the resolutions or goals that they had set earlier this year. I thought I would go over some of my opinions of why I think some people give up on a goal in neuro rehab too early, strategies to set realistic goals, as well as ways to make sure that you can stick to those goals and follow through on them, and what to do if you have gotten off track. So maybe you started out early on in your rehab, you did inpatient rehab, you did outpatient rehab, you're really gung-ho, and maybe it's now two or three years later and you feel like you've kind of fallen off the wagon a little bit. I wanna give you strategies that you can start today to get back on track. But before we dive into all of that, if you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you get notified every Every time I upload new videos and now let's go ahead and dive in. So before I dive into the solution focused approach that I take to most of these videos, let's just clear the air. Neuro rehab is hard. It is not for the faint of heart. There are plenty of opportunities where it is tempting to give up or become content with where you're at and I get that. This is something that was unexpected, out of your control, and I think it's really, really important to understand that this is like no other goal or journey you've ever had to endure before. It's not the same as recovering from an orthopedic injury. It's not the same as maybe goals that you set for yourself at work, and if you put a plan together, it was like clockwork and you were able to diligently and systematically check off everything on your checklist and achieve that goal in a short amount of time. This is much different and it does require a little bit of a different mindset, but that being said, you can also utilize a lot of the things that you did for your job or in the past with previous injuries you can use those skills to help you, but it is important to know that they are definitely different and you need to go in with that expectation that this is different and you are going to have to push through times of feeling like giving up. You are gonna have to push through negative emotions, all those things that can come along with any type of a catastrophic health crisis that we face in life. I've been doing this for a long time. I've seen people come through the system multiple times. I've seen people early on in their recovery. I've seen them kind of drop out of the system for a while and then come back into the system. And so I've seen a lot of people give up on rehab, stop coming to rehab, stop doing their home exercises. But during that time, I have identified some things that I think are the reasons why people give up on their goals. One is that you just set unrealistic expectations. So I hope by watching this channel and some of the videos that I've done on the stages of movement recovery, that has helped you to understand where you might be at in the recovery process and set realistic goals for yourself. The other thing is, is that people just don't set measurable goals. And I know this to be true because I often ask people what their goal is and a lot of times I get things back like, I just wanna be normal again, or I just want to walk better. And so that's where I usually have to step in and help to set goals that are more measurable. Sometimes people set goals that are just too big, but they don't set any goals in between to help bridge the gap between where they're at today and getting to that bigger goal. Sometimes people give up because they hit a plateau 
Plateaus are totally normal, especially if you're recovering from a stroke or a brain injury. Usually in the beginning, you make a lot of progress really fast and then you do plateau. And a lot of times you'll see people drop off or just lose the motivation that they had at the beginning at that point. And then the other thing that I see a lot is that some people have placed more value on extrinsic motivation versus intrinsic motivation. So either someone is doing this because they want to please their therapist or they set a goal because they want to please their therapist, or they want to please their kids or they want to please their spouse. And without some internal drive that is pushing you to push through the hard days, I think that's another reason why some people give up on their goals. So now, what is the best method to combat some of these common pitfalls or prevent these pitfalls from happening? And the way that you combat is just to set good goals. And a widely used acronym that's used across industries are SMART goals. And it definitely applies to neuro rehab. And I hope even some of you seasoned viewers who I know probably already have a system in place, I hope that you stay and watch this video because I still think there might be little cues that I give or things that I say that might help you to even enhance how you're setting your goals and how you are progressing towards those goals. So SMART goals, what are SMART goals? SMART stands for goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. So let's go ahead and start with the S. What does it mean to be specific when you're setting your goal? Well, you want to identify something that clearly addresses what you hope to accomplish. For example, I want to walk better. Well, that doesn't really identify clearly what you want to accomplish. A better goal might be the specific movement that you want to accomplish. So I wanna walk 150 feet or walk to the mailbox without my toe catching the ground. Or instead of setting a goal like, I just wanna be able to cook meals again, make it a little bit more specific. I wanna cook a specific meal. I wanna be able to boil spaghetti or I wanna be able to make a sandwich or make it more specific because that will help you further on down this process of being able to set intermediate goals that are measurable to get to that goal if you have an idea in your head or a vision in your head of what exactly it is that you want to be able to cook. Another one I hear all the time is I just want to be normal or I want to return to work. Well, I want to return to work not really specific enough. What do you need to be able to do at work? Maybe break it down. Do you need to be able to drive? Do you need to be able to go up and down stairs? Do you need to be able to type? Instead of just saying, I wanna be able to go back to work. The M stands for measurable. What evidence can you use to show that you are making progress? That is critical. If you don't have any measurable evidence, it's really hard to know when you're making progress and thus another reason why you might give up on a goal. So maybe sticking with that walking example I used earlier, maybe it's that you want to walk to the mailbox and only strike your foot on the ground three times, or you wanna to walk to the mailbox without striking your foot at all. Those would be adding a measurable component. You made a distance, walk to the mailbox, and you made a measurable goal specific to the quality of the movement, not striking your foot on the ground. The A stands for setting goals that are achievable. And that really is where it is good to be working with a physical therapist to get their input on maybe giving you some suggestions on what goals are appropriate and what are some reasonable expectations prior to setting that goal. And I would say this is probably one of the most important steps. And it's really important not to compare yourself to anyone else. Every stroke is different. Every person with MS is different. It's different whether you are someone that has relapsing remitting or primary progressive. Guillain-Barre syndrome, exactly the same thing. Some people leave the hospital walking without an assistive device. Some people leave the hospital in a wheelchair and can't move their legs at all. So it's really important to know where you're at right now and what are some reasonable expectations. Along those same lines, I think it's really important for me to mention, this might be a little bit of a soapbox moment here, but it's really important in this goal setting process to really accept where you're at. So for some of you, not all of you, I 
look at the comments. Most of you are super realistic and super motivated and aren't struggling with this, but people that are earlier in their rehab sometimes struggle with this is just accepting where you're at. And that's not easy. And I'm not saying I have all the answers or I have the 12 step program that helps with that, but you really do need to accept that this has happened and that this is where you're at. And it's not going to be a quick fix. And there is no pill out there that is going to immediately cure you of all of your movement problems. And you're going to be returning to work and get your old life back tomorrow. So really accepting where you're at is the best way to be able to set realistic goals. On the other hand, ignoring that this is even happening or ignoring the fact that you had a stroke or ignoring the fact that you're recovering from Guillain-Barre syndrome or ignoring the fact that you have MS, really makes it difficult to set realistic goals. And without goals, it is really easy to lose your motivation when it comes to getting your movement back. So accepting where you're at and setting goals that are achievable. The R stands for setting goals that are relevant, selecting goals that align with your values not what your therapist thinks is important, not even what your family thinks is important, although their input is definitely something that I think is helpful, but really it needs to be something that you are passionate about, an activity that you are passionate about getting back to, that you know will bring you joy and improve your quality of life. Those are the goals that you want to establish. And then the T stands for time based. So you do want goals that have some sort of a time frame that you work towards. So that you should set short term goals and long term goals. Long term goals would be what is your ideal vision for you down the road? What do you ultimately what is your dream activity that you absolutely want to be able to get back to. And then the short term goals are kind of like rungs on the ladder that help you get to that long term goal. So for instance, you know, maybe you want to run a 5k. Well, a short term goal maybe be walking without your hip popping out to the side or you hiking your hip up because all those things obviously will make it harder to have the endurance or the energy to finish a 5k. So maybe breaking down the quality of that movement or your short term goals would be the distances to get to that 5k distance, setting shorter time frames. So what can you accomplish in two to three weeks? Those would be short term goals on the way to your long term goal. So that's how you establish good goals. Now, what do you do if you are someone it was kind of a joke at the beginning that people fall off the wagon after six weeks. I mean, there's some truth to that. But in general, it is a common theme that happens, maybe not in a six week time frame. But I hear this a lot. I get messages about this that I did a lot at the beginning and I haven't really done anything for several years. So what is the step to getting back on track? First, it's reflecting on what could have gone wrong. So I talked about some of the things that I believe reasons people kind of fall off the wagon or you know, lose their motivation towards their goals. So what are some of the reasons for you? Were you unrealistic about your goals? Did you hit a plateau and you interpreted that in your head as this is it, this is the best that I'm gonna ever get? Did you have an injury or a hospitalization or something that left you discouraged and you lost the motivation to kind of get back on track because now you had had a setback and you know the journey seemed a lot longer? What were the things that you can identify that kind of got you off track? And setting up a plan for what you're gonna do to change those things or prevent those things from happening again. For example, having a hospitalization, sometimes that just happens. I will tell you any hospitalization sets you back. Just laying in a hospital bed where you're not given the freedom to move around as much, you do get deconditioned. So what is your plan for getting back on track? Maybe you spend that time in the hospital doing bed level exercises. So what does that routine look like if you can? A lot of times you're, you know, if you have a hospitalization, you're medically not able to do that stuff. But what is that plan going to look like in the hospital where you can already start preparing for getting back on track when you leave the hospital? Not waiting till you leave the hospital, but spend that time maybe figuring out a plan as to how you're going to get back on track. And really, I can't stress this enough because I do think that this is common. 
was it that you got discouraged or you lost hope or you got angry and threw in the towel? Was there some kind of a negative emotion that just became prominent in your life that caused you to give up on these goals? Because that is going to happen. For most of you on this channel, you've had some kind of catastrophic health crisis and that sucks. And occasionally, yes, you just need to say it. That really sucked. And if you know that that negative emotion is what caused you to get off track, I would have a plan for that. Maybe spend time meditating where you can really feel your emotions a little bit more and identify some of those negative emotions and maybe have a list of ways to express that emotion or get that emotion out. That could be setting a punching bag up in your garage and just like punching it or, you know, somehow get that energy out next time so that it doesn't just what I call make you implode to the point where you almost kind of self-sabotage. So being able to recognize those negative emotions, which are completely normal and they're going to happen, knowing what to do with that negative energy and hopefully not letting it fester to the point where you, again, self-sabotage. And then what what's the starting point? How do you get back on track? Well, start with small steps. Maybe you don't even do that smart thing yet. You don't set those goals. You just got to move. You got to get out of bed. You got to put one foot in front of the other. And maybe that's where you start. You just get out of bed. Set a small step that is achievable that you know you can accomplish. And then it will just build. And these little goals will start to kind of pull you out and get you back on track, I promise. And then as you're doing that and as you're pulling yourself back into a consistent routine, try and find the little progresses that you're making. I talk about this a lot. If you're 1% better, you're better. Try and look for opportunities where you can just focus on the positive every day, even if it's not that you achieved that short-term goal, but you're closer. You're 1% closer to that goal. And then once you've reflected on how you got off track and now that you're back on track, stop looking behind and just keep your eyes focused ahead on the goal. There's nothing you can do about it. It happened, whether it was a year of not doing any rehab or whether it was eight years of not doing rehab, it doesn't matter. At some point that doesn't do you any good, much better just to stay focused ahead, get yourself out of that sedentary life that you might now have, set some goals for yourself and you can do this. 90% of rehab, and I've said this before, 90% of neuro rehab is mental. 10% is physical. I have zero evidence that supports that other than my own experiences. And I've seen people that had very minor neurologic damage that it ends up impacting their entire life. And I've seen people that have had catastrophic injuries that should not be where they are at but they are just that type of person that never gives up and that's super motivated and they do it. So hang in there. I know you guys can do that. I hope you found this valuable. Definitely leave in the comments, what are some of your strategies? Cause there's a lot of you in this group. I think the reason I just keep making these videos is because you all encourage me that stroke recovery, recovery from Guillain-Barre, living with MS, like it is possible to keep getting better because I see you guys leaving your success stories in the comments. So what are some strategies that you all use to help you stay motivated, help you overcome some of the negative emotions that are surely to come along with this journey? Leave those in the comments below. Again, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you in the next video.